Hi, my name is Neve O'Connor, and I'm here with two musicians. We have Celia Zhang and Rayleigh Biggs. Thanks for being on the show with us. Um, instead of me trying to rattle off your incredible histories, I'm just going to give you both a chance to give us some snapshots of what you've been up to. So, Celia, if you want to start. Sounds great. So, I was born in Iowa, but mostly grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, that's where I would say most of my musical training before college had taken place. Um, once I reached college, I went to the Juilliard School in New York City and received my master's at the Yale School of Music. And then I recently moved to Boston and started a teaching and performing career here. That's amazing. <laughs> Great. Really? Yeah, so I grew up in Florida. Uh, I was fortunate enough to kind of land in a, a classical music community, uh, specifically classical guitar down there, and uh, very lucky to, to earn a scholarship to Florida State University. So I uh, completed that. I got a bachelor's at Florida State for classical guitar performance, and then I moved up here um, for the purpose of going to New England Conservatory. So not as fortunate on the scholarship side, but uh, very fortunate culturally to, to be here. And since I've been, I've been out since 2014, and same as Celia, I've been, I've been teaching and performing as much as I can, building a career out of that. That's awesome. Wow, thank you so much. Um, so I just have a couple questions for both of you. Mm -hmm. um, or I'll start with individual questions. Celia, uh, I noticed when reading up on your like history and what you've accomplished mm -hmm. that you were involved in a music in schools initiative. Yes. Can you speak more to that? Yes, so when I was at Yale in New Haven, there was a program that was a joint program between the Yale School of Music, the Graduate School, and the New Haven Public School System. So what would happen was the graduate students at Yale would get to collaborate with the public school students in their music classes and work with the public school teachers and so on and give music lessons, give sectionals, give coachings and advice for the musicians in the public schools. And they were all of all kinds of backgrounds, so it was a great way to share love of music and also gain teaching experience in the process. That's amazing. So. That uh, I really <coughs> appreciate that too because I remember when I was a freshman in high school, we had, you know, hordes of art <laughs> students down at City Hall, like begging for funding for these programs. And I think it's just really important to have mentors and people that are equally passionate about the art that they do influencing younger people. Absolutely, it's awesome. very important nowadays. And yeah. so, lucky to get to take part in that. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> awesome. And you've also performed like all over the world, right? Can you speak a little to that? Well, a lot of my training included doing summer festivals and to those Luckily for me, got to take place in all kinds of places, somewhere in Aspen, Colorado, Charleston, but also I near Beijing in China, in um, South Korea, also a concert in Austria. It, it was just all over the place, and so it was a great excuse to travel. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so Quincy's lucky to have you. So Happy to be here. <laughs> and Rayleigh, when I was reading about you, I you know, obviously came across your awesome videos, and I was thinking to myself, do you have a background in editing or videography, or uh, do you do those <laughs> videos yourself, or do you get help? Uh, yeah, the, all those are 100% are me, and I, it's just a cell phone, actually. So, wow. so yeah, we all have kind of access to such great cameras, I think, at the moment, but, but I have zero training in that sort of thing. Those videos, for me, are, are uh, uh, I do so much classical music stuff. Sometimes, I, you know, personally, I feel a little bit stifled by it, so I do. Um, it's a great way for me to kind of get things off my chest, and and uh, it's it's a bit more of a snapshot of my life for for me to look back on. Yeah, they're really great, and you know they show kind of like a, vo a more vulnerable side of you as an artist too, which is so which is so great when we have such an like an overload of media these <laughs> days. You know what I mean? It's great, yeah. but. Also, I was just wondering if you ever like write your own music. If you have any albums or anything in the works? Yeah, I don't. I don't have any albums at all. Uh, again, I, much more personally to me, I, I feel like the game of music has changed a lot since I uh, started. So, I used to put a lot of weight on on albums, and I used to put a lot of weight on uh, you know, even copyright and kind of protecting stuff. And now. As I've kind of evolved, I, I care much more about just kind of getting things out and, and moving on, like not really thinking so much. 
doing it just to do it, right? <laughs> you know, like yeah. for the love of it. Yeah. And so you sing as well. Was that something that, you know, you've always been doing or was it your career in music that kind of brought that out in you? Yeah, so I, I am, again, by no means trained as a, as a singer or even a songwriter. Uh, it was much more for me to um, explore that kind of on my own after having been so deeply trained in, in classical guitar. Um, I just sort of felt like exploring that sort of thing, and, and it feels to me very authentic to, to the experience I'm having, so it's just, just kind of an exploration, to be yeah. honest. It, it's probably kind of like cathartic and therapeutic as well. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Awesome. And it's, the thing I always tell people is it's kind of my deathbed soundtrack. <laughs> it's like <laughs> a way to, uh, uh, you know, look back on things, and, and, you know, very frankly, I don't uh, care if it does well or if, it, uh, if anybody listens to it. It's, it's honestly for me. That's it's for awesome. me to, to sort, sort some things out. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, that's awesome. <laughs> so thanks, guys. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just had this question when I was, you know, reading about you guys. You have great backgrounds. And now you're coming to this place of, like, bestowing your wisdoms onto <laughs> today's youth, I suppose. But how does your uh, experience in performing uh, kind of manifest itself in your teaching and you know what do you want to bestow on to your students now that you're at EKS both of you mm -hmm. oh if you if maybe one of you want to talk a little bit a bit about the program that you're both a part of at EKS sure. Celia? so EKS is a, uh, a studio here in Quincy actually it's just on the road it's on Standish Avenue uh, and it's uh, a high quality music school so it's it's very focused on on classical instrumental instrumentalists and um, we have piano, violin, woodwinds, singing, uh, guitar. guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone's going to kill me for leaving something out. But we have uh, we have all the instruments that are in a classical music setting, and then some. So it's it's much more focused on uh, like a real mastery of of an instrument at a young age. Mm. So it's uh, it's a great place to be a part of. I happen to be I've been there since it started. So I started the guitar program there. And wow. really, really have a great group of kids. Like, really, really uh, excellent, excellent studio there for me. And we've actually paired up with uh, what's called the Royal Conservatory of Music. So we have our students, um, the ones we feel are ready for it, and the ones who are ready to take that challenge on. Uh, they can register for the assessment program. So there's a there's a whole hierarchy of levels for students to kind of progress through and be tested and graded on. So it kind of raises the stakes of uh, of their performance. Mm. So big pairing there, but it's it's no joke. It's a high quality program yeah. right here. Sounds like serious objectives for you know young people that are trying to practice their skills, for which certain. is awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Celia, what do you teach down at the school? I teach violin. Um, it's unfortunately the only instrument I can play, <laughs> but it's something Please. that <laughs> I absolutely love to do. Um, personally, over my career, since since I started 20 years ago playing, I feel like I've gone through a huge journey in terms of experiencing things, taking things in, and I feel like while teaching that to other students, it's incredibly important to be able to empathize mm -hmm. with the joys, but also the struggles <laughs> of learning to play an instrument. And so those are things that I really like to highlight in my lessons and emphasize that I understand where things are coming from, I understand what the struggles are, and I'm here to help. So Yeah, do you ever have moments really of like seeing younger <laughs> parts of yourselves in these kids? You Too know? often. Oh man. Yeah, <laughs> it absolutely. freaks me out. It's not it's easy, amazing. right? You know, like I someone tried to teach me how to read music once and I was like, <laughs> not happening. You know? <laughs> it's it's a different language, you it know? It really, really so, is. So wow, that's amazing. Do you have any like favorite memories from the school so far or you know any any funny story <laughs> to, to share you know? I would say there was one student a couple of weeks ago who was having a well she just started this new technique called double stops where you play two at the same time and the concept sounds extremely fancy but in terms of the execution it's really like a matter of logic Mm -hmm. in a way. So when she approached it during the first lesson, she was freaking out. She was just like, I can't do this. This no. is too complicated. Uh, and all these things. And then that suite, she had it nailed perfectly. <laughs> and it was just one of those like perfect like eureka moments that you could see like when it hit her at the end of the first lesson. And then as she incorporated it into the next lesson, it was just so amazing. So. Oh, that sounds so cool. It like it must so be rewarding. such a, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. rewarding and such a <coughs> confidence boost. Like I bet you both are learning so much about your own skills as like honing oh, your skills sure. as well as helping <laughs> others. 
Absolutely. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to hear a piece from both of you today, right? Yes. And what's that called? Do you want to So this is that? by a guy named Niccolo Paganini. He's mm -hmm. a real big figure in uh, violin music. Uh, a less known fact is that he was, he was also a guitar player. So he wrote quite a bit of uh, uh, duo music, so, so guitar accompanying violin. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them. This is called Cantabile. So it's a slower kind of uh, uh, lyrical uh, show-off piece for, for Celia. <laughs> Have some diva moments. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. You deserve it, for sure. <laughs> and d d do either of you want to talk about your, your upcoming performance at the, the Thomas Crane Library, you know, for our viewers? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to play, this, this piece is going to be on it, along with some other Paganini pieces. We're going to play kind of the heavyweights of uh, guitar and, and violin duo music. So Paganini, um, a big one is Piazzolla, Astor Piazzolla. We're going to play a piece called The History of the Tango. So it, it, uh, tango is a, is a uh, Argentinian dance. A, it's a, it was a form of a lot of the 20th century, and it went through a lot of um, iterations and kind of evolving. And uh, we go through three exact dates and places for each, each uh, iteration of, of the tango. We're also going to do a, a Bach piece and some solos from, from each of us. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming in to speak with us. Can't wait to hear your piece. And um, I wish you luck at the school and for all of your very lucky students. Yeah. Thank so. you. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. So if you want to come down and see Celia and Rayleigh play on February 25th, they're going to be at the Thomas Crane Public Library at 3 p.m. Thank you so much, guys, and have a great day. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.